majestic mountains of eastern Pennsylvania. But that'll be pierced today by the thunderous roar of ARCA race engines for today's AC Spark Plug 150. It is a near perfect day for racing. However, it is an overcast afternoon and there is a serious chance of thunder showers in the area. Some welcome relief from the hot up days earlier in the week. Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Tarrant and welcome to Pocono International Raceway, one of the more demanding facilities anywhere in the country. A unique layout here. Three turns only, all three varying degrees of banking, connected by differing lengths of straightaways. A tough track for even the most seasoned competitors. Now, there are a lot of inexperienced drivers in today's ARCA race who will certainly learn a lot today on this racetrack. Joining me today are two-time NASCAR champion Ned Jarrett. And Ned, there are a couple of experienced drivers in the field that are familiar with this facility. Bob Stack in particular, Jerry. He has seven career starts here at Pocono. He has won five of those races, so that's batting over 700. However, Jimmy Horton is batting 1,000 in 1990. There have been four races by the ARCA Series on tracks more than one mile. Jimmy Horton has won every one of them. So I think we can see a real showdown here between those drivers today. Could be quite a shootout between Horton and Bob Shack. Now, of course, Jimmy Horton, the 34-year-old Hammond, New Jersey driver, has had a tough road to hoe. What a difference a year makes for Jimmy Horton. The big turnaround from last year. Last year at this time, I was quitting. I was bringing everything home and selling it. And, uh, over the winter, we sat down, worked out a program. We got you know, good motor builders. We got the cars right. And we worked at you know, just trying to stick with the program. And that's what kind of turned it around. And you know, we won the four Arca races, and they got people looking, and it just got their attention. Well, Jimmy Horton has ridden his arc of success into a Winston Cup ride, as did our Benny Parsons many years ago. BP? Jimmy Horton, Jerry, is the greatest thing that's happened to ARCA racing in a long, long time. Because you know these ARCA drivers felt like they were pouring money down a hole. There was no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. He's proven there can be life after ARCA. Tracy Leslie, Bob Keselowski, Bobby Bowser, so many young guys with a tremendous amount of talent. Now they think if they can just win some races in ARCA, maybe they'll get that shot one of these days in NASCAR. But the one thing that people still look at, the one thing, the resume that I had to take away from ARCA back in 68 and 69 was the two ARCA championships. People still look at the champions when they think about people that are good race car drivers. Indeed they do, Benny Parsons, and you are indeed a champion in our book. Let's take a look at who may win it this year. The point standings currently in the ARCA division, Bob Breback, the 43-year-old Ashland, Wisconsin driver, leading by 25 points over the reigning champion, Bob Keselowski. The young Bobby Bowser in third, Chris Gerke in fourth, and the ageless veteran, 51-year-old Bob Dodder, a three-time series champion in the top five in points. We are on a rain delay hold here, a little bit of rain in the area if they're trying to dry the track. Hope we'll be back very shortly with racing action from Pocono International Raceway. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. The Ford Thunderbird. Perfect car for a nice Sunday drive. You don't have to worry when rain's pouring down. Cause your home is safe whatever comes around. Linseed oil penetrates wood. Sealants protect the surface. Olympic weather scoring. It's no it's no wonder you stop the rain. Olympic stops the rain. Protect your home with Olympic products now and save an additional $2 per gallon. The Quaker State King Racing Buick, winner of the 1989 Die Hard Award for the most top NASCAR miles, is winning again in 1990 as Brett Bodine takes first in the first Union 400. It takes a tough oil to keep a car running this tough. And it takes a tough driver to step right in, step on it, and win. But number 26 is one tough car. Brett Bodine is one tough driver. And Quaker State is one tough motor oil. Last weekend, Bo Jackson and the Royals beat up Boston in Fenway. Now the Red Sox try to return the favor and keep near the top of the AL East. Sunday night at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. 
track at Pocono International Raceway for today's AC Spark Plug 150 ARCA Permatech Series event. Stop number 10 on the 21 race, $1.5 million ARCA Tour. Today's Speed World cover is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Quaker's sake, the big two is one tough motor oil. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste, this Bud's for you. We have had thunder showers in the area, as we mentioned in the opening of the show. And just moments ago, we had a little shower to come across and skirt the northern part of the racetrack. It has since moved away. The track drying machines, the equipment, vehicles are on the speedway and have officially dried the track. And, of course, the drivers are in their cars. And there you see them drying the facility here, this massive 2.5-mile super speedway in the Pocono Mountains. Now, earlier today, Ned Garrett, uh, a lot of people in the garage area were all smiles when they were able to see Darrell Waltrip for the first time get back into Winston Cup competition. Now, remember two weeks ago at Daytona, Ned, uh, a tough afternoon for Darrell Waltrip. Well, it certainly was. They were out on the practice session leading up to the Pepsi 400. A number of cars got in trouble when oil was spilled on the track. And here's Dave Marcus in the blue car coming in and slamming into Darrell Waltrip after he had stalled just off of turn four. Darrell's left femur, the upper bone in the leg, was shattered earlier today. He did step out of a van on crutches with his leg uh, in a long leg splint, put that tied suit on, and hobbled his way toward that Chevrolet. Now, they had worked earlier in the week for five hours in the tied shops in Charlotte. Five different crew members working on and off. They videotaped putting him in and out of the car to make sure they would not twist that leg at all. And again, they worked it to perfection this morning, just putting him in the race car, sliding him in ever so gingerly. They had cut the seat. They have moved the clutch pedal up and away to give him as much room as possible. Once they slide him in the car, they actually unlock that knee brace so he'll have some mobility in his foot and be able to work that clutch pedal. And now you're looking at DW, Darrell Waltrip, live in the garage area with our Benny Parsons. Yeah, normally, folks, it's the cars that over here. It's me trying to get down to talk to you. Thanks, Darrell. I appreciate it. You feeling okay? No, I'm worried about you, buddy. You're overheating. <laughs> yeah, I am That's overheating. Number one problem here in the pits. <laughs> I'm <sorry laughs> there. How was the lap? Oh, it was great. I, uh, I wish I could have made more, but I promised I'd only do one or two at a time, so I saw I did. It went good, though. Getting in the car is easy. Getting out is easy. I run a 5980, and uh, there was a lot left, so I felt real good. I was comfortable, and the people were all waving, you know, it made me feel real good. We just watched the crash on TV. A moment. Have you seen the crash yet? Yeah, I, I was laying in bed, strapped down, couldn't move, but I still rolled over when it when, when I watched it. it Woo, it hurt. That's a that's a lick hard enough to kill a guy. So I feel really lucky to the Lord has really been good to me to let me be here today. And two weeks later, sitting here in the back of my truck, been out on the racetrack. I you know just fat, dumb, and happy. Well, you know, you look at little brother down here now at Bristol. He's supposed to be hurt. Yeah. He walked away. How do you figure deals like this? Well, you know, he's a lot younger than I am, and he just doesn't know that those things will hurt you, I guess. But I've been doing this 20 years, and this is the first time I didn't walk away from one of them. So uh, uh, I feel real fortunate uh, to be no worse than I am and, and to be back uh, here at the racetrack. And uh, I look at that wreck. I did look at it a couple of times. And uh, look how hard a lick I took. and, and uh, I've just had some great care. Dr. Gillespie down in Daytona and uh, Dr. Sowers in Nashville, Nick and, and uh, Lori, my therapist. I have a lot of new people on my team now, Ben, that I didn't know I was going to end up with. Uh, I got a whole staff of people now that are helping me get well, and they're really doing a good job in making it work out for me. You know, Michael Walter, in Bristol, when you had the terrible crash, we talked to Daryl. We saw the emotion. Can you explain what the emotion was like going knowing how bad Darrell was hurt in Daytona? Yeah, it was it was real scary for me. I uh, I just heard rumors, you know, your brother's been hurt. Uh, they haven't gotten him out of the car. And the not knowing is the worst thing. So I went to the hospital to meet him. And I, we were just talking. He come through the door on a stretcher, and he said, oh, my leg is hurting, y'all, my leg. Just make sure you don't mess with my leg. And by me, he went into the into the operating room or the room where they was going to check on him. I said, well, he's all right. He knows his leg hurts. <laughs> and uh, so I went in there and I said, you okay, brother? He said, yeah, Mike, I'm fine. My, my leg, were we racing? Were we having a race or were we, what, were we practicing? What were we doing? And, uh, you know, it was a concussion and it, and it was brief. He quickly realized, you know, put all the details together. 
But, uh, you know, just being able to talk to him and, and him knowing who I was. And, I mean, it's real scary what we do at times, and that was real scary for me. And just being able to be with him and, and hug him and, and, you know, know that he was there was real comforting for me. Older brothers are always a little bit confused, aren't they? <laughs> that one is, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Ernie, now just think, you were in the crash on Friday with Daryl. If you'd hit the 71 car first, he would have never got to Daryl. Well, that's why I just walked up and told, you know, uh, Daryl that if, if I'd have just went by a little slower, he might have nicked me and ended up somewhere else. But, well, I hate to see Daryl get hurt, but I'm sure glad he didn't hit me because he was coming awful fast. And Daryl was saying earlier that, you know, it takes an awful lot to stop a 200-mile-an-hour race car with your body. And, and I wouldn't want to have to try to stop it with our car. See, but they, the they, these two cats come over here. What they came over here to tell me was it's a good thing I wasn't in the race on Saturday. Because they were telling me about how bad the start of the race was on Saturday, and they got their cars tore up again on Saturday, and I would have been right up in the middle of all that. So they came over here to really encourage me and tell me how lucky I was that I wasn't in the race on Saturday. Tomorrow we're talking about one lap and come in, right? Yeah, I got to, Benny. Uh, I gave my word to everybody, NASCAR, my doctors, my family, my brother Bobby over here, my wife, and everybody that... Uh, I would just do one lap, and that's all I need to do right now. The leg, even though I'm here, I'm not well by any means. Uh, the leg has a lot of rehabilitation it has to do. I'm eight weeks away from putting any weight on it of any kind, and then I'm eight more weeks away from walking on it. So we're looking at 16 weeks before I can physically get back to doing, uh, doing what I did 100%. I ain't looking at 16 weeks before I run a whole race again, though I can tell you that, and I'll tell that doctor that too. But... Uh, I don't know when it'll be. Hopefully, I can make it to Bristol. Well, your arms ain't broke, so how about fighting a little bit more as we go to break, will you? Okay, buddy. Jerry, back to you. <laughs> oh, I tell you, some characters, and it's awfully good to see Darrell Walter. You know, when I walked in the hospital there on Monday after his accident on Friday in practice, he looked to be quite uncomfortable in a lot of pain, Ned. And, and, and the therapist came in while I was sitting there with Stevie Walter and Darrell, and Darrell was very uncomfortable, and the therapist said, let's just take the day off, because I know you're, you're hurting. And Darrell said, oh, well, we can't afford to take any time off. i got to get in that race car. And so Stevie had to leave the room because she didn't, couldn't bear to see him suffer. But he, they turned that machine up and he started flexing at me a little more. And uh, I think that effort is what put him back in that car this morning. Well, I tell you, it takes a lot of willpower and certainly a lot of desire. And he has all of that. You know, we were talking about Jimmy Horton a moment ago. He is the fellow that will replace Darrell Waltrip in that tied car tomorrow. And that's the big break that Benny Parsons was talking about, that when a driver wins four races in ARCA or competition of that sort, maybe they can get a break like Jimmy Horton has gotten. And you'll be able to watch every lap of the AC Spark Plug action tomorrow at noon live here on ESPN. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, of course, and, and we'll all, all be on hand here for that action at noon. 200 laps, 500 miles here at Pocono International Raceway for the AC Spark Plug 500. And we are going to go ARCA racing here momentarily. The track is nearly dry. We're set for the AC Spark Plug 150, 150-lap ARCA race. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. We've got a dedicated finance department. People that are here, the only thing that they do is try to get the best financing that they can for the customer. No down payment, low down payment, extended terms, the ability to go to 13 different lenders to get financing. You know, if you went down uh, and tried to go to 13 different banks, it would take you forever to do that. We can do that in half a day, and we can get the best financing for Hi, folks, this is Mike McIntyre for Bronson's Furniture going out of business sale. We've got three-piece living room sets, $499. Save up to 70% off top quality brand name bedding. Everything must go. Three-piece sectional with corner unit and two incliner. Now $488. But hurry, they're really going fast. At Bronson's Furniture, we must sell. We've got a four-piece bedroom set for $299. Remember, folks, that's Bronson's Furniture going out of business sale. 812 East McKinley and Mishawaka. Back at Pocono International Raceway, as you see, they have now fired the engines on pit road as the ARCA cars and stars are ready for their 150-mile, 60-lap event here on the two-and-a-half-mile Pocono International Raceway. We mentioned earlier a rain shower had skirted the area this morning and just sprinkled a little water on the track just prior to our coming on the air. And, of course, uh, that shower has since moved away to the north, Ned, and they have dried the track, and the drivers are in their cars. There's a lot of humidity in the area, Jerry, but they have done a good job with the safety vehicles of driving. The, the track, it was not, as you said, wet all over, but this is two and a half mile speedway, and it can rain on one end and the sun be shining on the other end. But they have done a good job of getting it in good condition. I'm sure they'll run a few 
caution lap to let the heat out of the exhaust of these race cars dry it even a little more, but it should get in good condition here before too long. An ideal day for racing here for the drivers. Now, it was unseasonably warm earlier in the week. Temperatures approaching the 90-degree mark, but now it's about 70 degrees, and it'll be a nice, cool afternoon for the drivers. And it should be the same tomorrow. Now, we just moments ago saw Darrell Waltrip, who was injured at Daytona, and will get out after driving one lap tomorrow. Now, our Benny Parsons is standing by with another driver who will need a relief tomorrow in that 500-mile event. Benny? Folks, you saw the blue 71 car spin in the side of Darrell Waltrip. Dave Marcus, the driver of the 71, and Dave, you're injured almost identical to Darrell's, aren't they? Well, it seems that way, Benny. I haven't talked to Darrell since he arrived here at Pocono, but from talking to other people, it's about the same, and we're about going to be laid up about the same amount of time, I guess, uh, 8 to 12 weeks. What, as the cars roll out on the race, as the ARCA cars go out on the racetrack and start drying it off, exactly what were your injuries, Dave? Well, uh, Dr. Terry Trammell in Indianapolis, I sent him some x-rays and he called me back and uh, I think it was the fibula bone and the other bone above it. Uh, both had fractures. We had to repair those fractures, move them up and pin them. And I think he had to scrape a little bone and graft it in those areas and put a metal plate in. But he said the recovery would be 100% shouldn't have any reoccurring, uh, you know, shouldn't slow me down or hurt or it should be 100%. So uh, he said main thing right now is do not walk on it or put weight on it. He needs eight weeks for it to heal properly. Did you see the 17 car coming in Daytona or was there too much smoke or did you close your eyes? Well, when it started, Benny, I had just gone around Jimmy Means who had shut his car off for a plug check and I got a little high in the track, seen the smoke, tried to get down below it, got in some oil and just started spinning. It got going backwards and I was, you know, you don't know where you're going and of course you try to get your car around in a position to see where you're going. So I was in the process of trying to spin my car around to the right so I could look forward when I hit Daryl. Hard blow, wasn't it? It was extremely hard. Uh, although I don't think it completely knocked me out, it took all my breath. I couldn't breathe. I was gasping for air. Uh, when I started getting some breath, uh, boy, I said, geez, my left leg is really hurting. And, uh, of course, my hand got banged up a little bit, but it was a hard blow. But the car stood up good, uh, did what it was supposed to. Seat belts held, the seat, the helmet, everything. Uh, took a lot of shock. We broke some of the metal tubing in the car, some of the frame, but that's what it's designed to do is to absorb the impact so the driver doesn't have to take all the impact. So really I came out pretty well. No bad ribs or shoulders or anything like that. I don't know what my knee hit, if anything. I really think the foot got caught in the clutch pedal and the knee just didn't get up against anything and just stretched it so far it broke it. Folks, here's another driver going to run one lap tomorrow and Jim Sauter will be the relief driver. Ned, we talked about Darrell Walter being operated on two weeks ago. It was just eight days ago that Dave Marcus was in an operating room in Indianapolis, Indiana, and Terry Trammell took him in and repaired the femur, the upper bone, and the fibula, the small bone in the lower part of the leg at the knee where he had those two fractures. And uh, he did a tremendous job, as Dr. Trammell has always done with race drivers. And that's why Marcus is here. But he's a, he's a never-say-die guy. Oh, he even started the Pepsi 400 the very next day. And, J and uh, J.D. McDuffie, of course, got in the car after that. But, yeah, he's a never-say-die guy. He's uh, a real trooper. Well, they're going to run some of the cars coming by now behind the safety car here at Pocono. As you can see, it's still somewhat overcast. They are trying to get the cars to get some heat in the racetrack here and make sure there are no damp spots on this racetrack. Now, this track very, very wide, so it would take a little bit. It would hard for, be hard for the safety cr trucks to get every part of the track, particularly the front straightaway, completely dry. Excuse me, Jerry. These cars will drive quicker than those safety trucks. First of all, they're lowered to the ground, and then the heat coming out of the exhaust of these cars is uh, a drying factor, whereas the safety vehicles is primarily from the tires running over and the air that would come off of those safety vehicles that has the drying effect. But the cars have the, all of that, plus the heat coming out of the exhaust pipe, which is low to the ground. Well, Ned, let's take a look at the starting line of the Sears Die Hard starting grip for today's AC Spark Plug 150. First row, Tracy Leslie, 1988 Series champion, along with the man we talked about. Five wins and seven starts here, the veteran Bob Shack. Row two, a couple of youngsters, both 24 years of age. Chris Gerke, an up-and-coming young driver who finished fourth here last month. And the fellow who finished right in front of him last month in Arca competition at Pocono, Greg Trammell, also 24 years of age. Back in row three, Bob Keselowski, the defending Arca Series champion and the ageless veteran charging Charlie Glocksback driving a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. He will start sixth. 
row four. Bob Breback, the current point leader in overall archer competition. And of course, Jimmy Horton, four wins and four starts, batting a thousand in that same Pontiac. He will be in the eighth starting position. Back to row five. From Georgia, Cecil Eunice, a short track competitor, five-time dirt track champion in Jacksonville, Florida, in car number 31, along with Joe Nemirovsky in the car number 87. An impressive youngster, Bobby Bowsher, second-generation driver, two short track wins this year in ARCA. He will start inside row six, along with last year's rookie of the year, Graham Taylor, in the car number 76. Row seven, Bobby Gerhardt, an open-wheel dirt modified competitor from Pennsylvania, along with the car number nine of Doug French. In row eight, John Alexander, the car number 55, a car prepared by Bob Jack, so this car should run well today, and Sonny Gupta in the car number 01. Back in row nine, Lee Raymond, a former pole sitter and winner here at Pocono, watched for him to make a move early on, and the car number 04, starting only his second race ever in our competition, Mark Hardy. Row 10, Kenny Compton, the young son of L.C. Compton, the mayor of Gilbert, West Virginia, and of course, a longtime supporter of Arca Racing. Inside row 10, and the three-time Arca champion, the veteran Bob Dodder, in car number 8. Back in row 11, Don LaDuke, or Donnie LaDuke now, in car number 77, and Danny Bumbaco, a young man from New Jersey here in the car number 57. Back in row 12, Glenn Brewer, who is the older brother of Tim Brewer, a Winston Cup crew chief there for Junior Johnson's team, and 56, which is Jerry Hill. Row 13, car number 88, Bud Hagelin, and car number 96, a man starting his first race ever of any kind, Alan Pruitt. Back in row 14, Gary Weinbrower, a young man who had a lot of trouble, a veteran actually in our competition, had a lot of trouble getting here today because his crew chief was in the hospital, and of course, Tom Bigelow, the IndyCar veteran and a former USAC Sprint and Midget Champion. They picked the pace up a little bit, Ned, out there trying, I guess, to get some heat in the track. Yes, that will help to drive the track uh, considerably by picking the pace up, and uh, I expect it's uh, straining the pace car a little bit, even though these are, are special vehicles that you use for pace cars, and going along at a pretty good clip here down the front straightaway, but that will certainly help to drive that much quicker. Now, what the ARCA people will do is they will radio back and forth to their officials around the racetrack, but more importantly, they will radio to the crew chiefs and have them check with the drivers to determine just how the track is, and that's what's going on right now, and Benny Parsons is standing by with Tracy Leslie's crew chief, Larry LeMay. Exactly right, Larry. You asked Tracy how the racetrack is. What was his report? He said it was pretty good. He was surprised. He said it was a little damp in three, but other than that, it looked real good. How soon do you think it's going to be before we have a green? He didn't seem to think it'd be very long. He thought it'd be a lap or two. He thought it, it looked a lot better than what he thought. Man, I tell you what, as much running around as I've been doing, guys, I'm ready for a green flag. <laughs> Benny Parsons ready for racing. It's the new uh, Pocono diet plan for Benny Parsons after uh, Benny Parsons here uh, enjoying a lot of activity early on in the show and an outstanding job running down Dave Marcus, of course, and Darrell Walter trying to keep abreast of all that action, which you'll be able to see tomorrow. And we should have plenty of ARCA competition coming your way. A good crowd on hand today here. As I said, it's uh, always a, a tremendous fan contingent here in this area. They come out to watch the Winston Cup and ARCA stars at Pocono. But uh, Jerry talking about Benny doing all that running around now it's not too hard to catch those fellas with those broken legs <laughs> <laughs> but you should have seen benny trying to find that bear in the dumpster last <laughs> night out there at the restaurant that that was worth worth the price of admission i can imagine well it looks like we'll have two laps to go when they come back this time so we will be getting started here pretty quickly Two laps to go, and we'll get ready for green flag racing action here at Pocono International Raceway. The reins have moved away. We're set for racing action. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. You know, summer heat can wreak havoc on house paint, so choose Weather Beater. Come to Sears Summer National Paint Sale. We've reduced our Weather Beater flat finish paint to just $11.76. So see you at Sears. Sale ends July 28th. Hurry. Extra strength Rolaid, 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX. 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. Back at Pocono International Raceway, the field now picking up a little bit of speed here. They are still two by two. We have not yet seen the green flag as we are getting the final dry spots here over in turns two and three. And of course, uh, it's a unique racetrack. They had three turns. They're, as we said at the opening of the show, they have differing degrees of banking. And the drivers for many, many years here have tried to cheat a little bit down in turn one and turn three. Yes, they would go as low on the racetrack as they could possibly get. 
many times would get their left wheels down on off of the pavement onto the grass. Now this would create a problem for them. It would kick gravel up onto the racetrack and debris, cars behind them, run over it and cut tires. We've seen a lot of Winston Cup drivers and ARCA drivers in the past that have uh, had cut tires here, have to make unscheduled pit stops. Now they've done something about that here at Pocono for, for this race as we go down into or cut head into turn three this is one of the areas that they have gone in there you see the white line going in there these are like piano yeah. keys it looks like this these are the rumble strips there that they put they're actually two inch divots in the in the pavement on the inside of the track here this is going into turn one here you see this area and that it will keep the keep the guys honest keep them on the racetrack yes it will in fact it's made the racetrack a little bit longer i guess they won't be able to cut as short going into the turn because once they hit those ripple strips there they are going to uh, be in trouble i think they'll certainly break traction and it's still a tremendous vibration well the 29 drivers that were pulled that ran here last month 26 had cut tires no fault of goodyear but just simply stones and rocks and the debris being pulled up on the track as you said that in turns one and three and they suffered cut tires and it really did, didn't help their efforts at all in the race now with pocono and i think uh, the Mattioli family and Bob Clevin, they have really done a wonderful job putting these strips down here, and it should make for a great race today and tomorrow. Here's the car number 18. That is one of the Melling Ford Thunderbirds, and that car is owned by the Elliots and is being driven by a young man by the name of Greg Trammell. He's 24 years of age. He has four top five finishes and only five career super speedway starts. Now, he's a full-time employee at the Elliott Shop in Dawsonville, Georgia. He's the dyno man, works in the dyno room, so he knows exactly what kind of horsepower he has under the hood of that car. This is a car that Bill Elliott used to win up at Washington, Seattle, Washington, when he goes up to run the Winston West Tour about uh, two years ago. This car won at Seattle, Washington, and has been campaigned now in ARCA competition by Greg Trammell. He finished second here a couple of years ago, finished third here, in fact, finished second here last year, and finished third here last month, so an impressive young performance uh, by Greg Trammell. Well, here's Jimmy Horton, the fellow who has won all four of the Super Speedway races in the ARCA competition this year, and certainly he'll have a lot of fans here today. Jimmy lives in New Jersey, not too far from the Pocono International Raceway, so they're coming out to see if he can make it five in a row. And our pole sitter, Tracy Leslie, 1988 series champion, a 32-year-old driver. That's him in the Detroit Gaskets Oldsmobile at 155.690 miles per hour. A new event record here at Pocono International Raceway. And, of course, in only his sixth ARCA start of the year, he is running some ARCA races, but also trying to pursue a Winston Cup career. He did not get to qualify at Daytona because he wrecked his car during practice and qualifying and had to withdraw. Getting ready for the green flag. Coming out of turn four, the AC spark plug. 150, 150 miles, 60 laps, so two and a half miles. You see him coming at you down that seven tenths of a mile long straight away. Green flag waving the field of Arca coming up to the gearbox. And they will fan out some three or four wide there and end up very, very wide straight away. But they'll have to narrow it down when they go into turn one. They might be able to go in there side by side, but not three or four. Right? Turn one, a high speed hairpin turn, bank 14 degrees. They come off a of turn one, and remember, three different turns, and they come up the Long Pond straight away. The Long Pond straight, 3,055 feet, up to what is probably the most difficult turn in all of NASCAR racing. They call it the tunnel turn. There is Horton going by Keselowski. Horton in the car number 80. Back up front, Tracy Leslie showing the way. Right behind him is Bob Shack. They look across the tunnel turn and head for the short straightaway, only 1,700 feet into turn three. Well, you wonder if they'll sort of tiptoe the first couple of laps here, Jerry, in competition. They've had practice laps, but those ripple spots there, they want to be sure not to hit them. Speeds along this front straightaway and approaching 175 miles per hour. We're one of the fastest parts of this course, now single file. Well, you see the entire field going by. Some cars dropping back, some trying to gain positions even in the rear, and a couple of cars that have dropped back you know, quite a bit just now going into turn one as the leaders are now headed into the tunnel turn, turn two. We mentioned turn one is banked 14 degrees, and they're just coming across a tunnel turn there. That is banked only eight degrees, and they will head through the short sheet up to turn three, which is banked just six degrees. 
three different degrees of banking, but turn three, Ned, is probably the most critical of all as far as getting a good lap in. Well, if you don't get off of this turn very good, Gary, you're not going to go down the straightaway nearly as fast. So, yes, it is very, very important to get through this turn at a good speed. Don't lose traction coming over there and be able to use all of your horsepower down this long straightaway so you can get up to that 175 or so miles an hour. A couple of guys are going to take a peek and get a little itchy down toward turn one. Greg Trammell moves to the inside of the ball, back in line. As Ned said a moment ago, there is a single groove in turn one. If you get out of it, you can bite a big piece of concrete on the outside of turn one there, that high-speed hairpin. Well, we saw that they all stayed above those ripple strips on the inside of the track. That's an ingenious idea. It's, it's unique. I haven't seen that on a racetrack, but it, uh, I think it's going to really work. They felt that they widened the track and put more asphalt on the inside. They just cut it that much shorter. Sure, sure. they would. Absolutely. They did do something to break traction. Yeah, they drove right on down. There's Greg Trammell in third place. He said they laid some two before it down and covered them up with asphalt. And uh, Rusty Wallace said you go across that and try to cheat and literally shake the fillings out of your teeth. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, Trammell's working on Jack. Greg Trammell in the fourth Thunderbird. That's Shaq in a brand new Buick Regal. Two red cars. Shaq on the left of your screen. And Trammell now trying to outdrag him on the straightaway. And Trammell will get him going into turn one and take second spot away. He got good traction off of turn three, Jerry. And then got in the draft of Shaq's car down this long straightaway and was able to make the pass. Tracy Leslie moving away to about a seven car advantage over that battle for second spot between Trammell and Shaq. Boy, look at Trammell pull away once he got around Bob Shaq. Well, he works in the dino room. He knows how much he's got, so he's starting to push the pedal a little bit. Go back and show you that battle back in there. That's Jimmy Horton in the car number 80. That's the Pontiac that he used to win at Daytona, Atlanta, Talladega, and here last month. He started eighth, Jerry. He has moved up to sixth, but I think people expected him to move a little quicker than that, but maybe he's just sort of biding his time right now. He's running into pretty heavy traffic. Of the car number 19 in front of him, that's Chris Gerke, and just behind him is Bob Keselowski, the black car. Now, Gerke, the car number 28 is Charlie Glotz back to the left of your screen. Then comes Gerke, the black car, the white front, of course, the 80 is Horton, and just behind him, Keselowski, the defending series champion. I'll tell you, I've been impressed with the way these fellows have negotiated these relatively new turns. They, many of them have run on this racetrack many times, but watch a pass here. That is Chris Gerke going by Charlie Glotzbach. Now Glotzbach driving that Monte Carlo white and red numeral number 28. He made that look pretty easy there. Yeah, Gerke's really impressing a lot of people. Finished fourth here last month. His best speedway performance ever in ARCA competition. And now Horton again to move in somewhat on Glotzbach. Harden's Pontiac seems to be handling well. As he goes down the long straightaway, though, uh, Glassback got a pretty good jump off of that turn three. So still single file now as Glassback now he sneaks a pick to the inside. Driver's being very patient here early on. That's the car Glassback is driving is a former Junior Johnson Chevrolet. It's a Chevrolet Monte Carlo that he used to run third at Daytona with a couple of years ago. I believe he got a little out of shape there a moment ago that allowed Gerke to get by him, but now he wants to position back. He has reeled him back in. Early laps here at Pocono, Pennsylvania for the AC Spark Plug 150. Horton hanging right in there with Flats back. After four, fifth, and sixth place cars. Meanwhile, back up front, Tracy Leslie is pulled away by seven car lengths, but Trammell is trying to close here. The AC Spark Plug 150 at Pocono International Raceway in the early laps. Tracy Leslie is showing the way. Greg Trammell is running in second spot. Bob Shack third. And Chris Gerke fourth. An important thing you need to know about the new Ford Escort GT is right here in black and white. The 16-valve double overhead cam Ford Escort GT for those who truly appreciate the power of the press. Have you driven a Ford lately? Thank you. 
Life's full of simple pleasures. Like the comfort of Levi's jeans. Or had you forgotten? ESPN and the NFL team up once again for hard-hitting preseason excitement that makes this summer even hotter. The Denver Broncos, the AFC champions, mount the charge to finally achieve that one super season. The Seattle Seahawks will try to send a message to their AFC West rivals that this year they mean business. The Broncos battle the Seahawks in the American Bowl live from Tokyo. Saturday night, August 4th on ESPN. Back at Pocono International Raceway, we are under caution for the first time today. Tracy Leslie is the leader in the Detroit Gasket Oldsmobile, but Gary Weinbrewer, driver from Brook Park, Ohio, has spun his car. Let's take a look and see what happened to Weinbrewer. Well, he climbs out of the car, but he lost it, Jerry. The back end just gets around on him, and he gets it down on the grass, tries to get it straightened out, but that grass is very wet. Hits a piece of asphalt there, hopes that he can get it straightened out as other cars go by. And he continues to stay on the gas. You can see the wheel spinning. He's trying to stay away from this wall, but he's not going to be able to do it. He runs right into it. The car just simply wouldn't spin around on him, but it does look like there's too much damage there. Now, Weinberger had a problem. He just even getting here. His crew chief was back in the hospital with a kidney stone problem. He had to go borrow a crew chief from Tommy Riggins. He got Larry Knowles, who is Riggins Winston Cup crew chief, to help him out. But he has trouble early on. Here is Bob Keselowski early on in the pits. Uh, making a pit stop they will just fuel the car and check the tires out now we had a report a minute ago that possibly Tracy Leslie had a tire going down he had radioed in and thought he may have a tire going down and this caution flag uh, would be a break for him but he has yet to make an appearance on pit road we are under caution for the first time today here as the wildlife abounds here in the beautiful Pocono Mountains stay tuned for more Arca racing action after this I love the sound of the rain. And I love the taste of your fresh fruit coffee. Thanks, but it's not fresh fruit. It's new Traeger. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. You know, summer heat can wreak havoc on house paint, so choose Weather Beater. Come to Sears Summer National Paint Sale. We've reduced our Weather Beater flat finish paint to just $11.76. So see you at Sears. Sale ends July 28th. Hurry. Extra strength Rolades. 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX. 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. When sinus trouble strikes, reach for nasotine. Watch as they... Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Back at Pocono Raceway, our leader is in the pits. Let's go to Benny Parson. What a break this was for Tracy Leslie, our leader. They were going to throw the green flag, but ARCA officials found some oil down in turn one, kept the caution flag out. Tracy Leslie is fearful he has a flat tire. They were concerned about it, talking about it, since the caution flag was remained out for one more flag, one more left, they said, what the heck, let's just change four tires. The right side have been changed. Jack coming around, Jimmy Horton also is in the pits, making a pit stop. They're having trouble with the jack. There's something wrong. The jack won't go down far enough. Now they get it under the car, finally. So very fortunate they was able to do this on the caution flag and not on the green flag situation. Jimmy Horton drives back out of the racetrack. Meanwhile, Tracy Leslie, her pole sitter and leader, still in the pits. Now the left front finally is able to finish the pit stop of the way. Tracy Leslie making a pit stop. We saw Jimmy Horton also in the, in the pits for it, the car being fueled up a little bit. But Bobby Bowsher made a pit stop, as did uh, the car of, of Bobby Gerhardt, we should say, came in also along with Bobby Bowsher. So uh, 
A lot of pit action here in the first caution of the day for the spin of Gary Weinberg just out of turn one. A lot of racing action to come your way tomorrow here on ESPN Live at noon Eastern time. The AC Spark Plug 500 here from Pocono International Raceway. Can Bill Elliott repeat? Well, stay tuned tomorrow at noon. And then, of course, midnight tomorrow, the Toronto IndyCar event. Cart cars up, at, up in Toronto, Canada at Exhibition Place. A demanding 11-turn, 1.78 mile road course. And champion, defending champion Michael Andretti will try to hold off again Danny Sullivan up at Toronto Indy. Let's check in again with Benny Parsons. Jerry, I said that they were having trouble with the jack on the Tracy Leslie car. Look what happened. The brace that runs alongside the power unit came out. And when they tried to get the jack on the left side, this was in the way, wouldn't let the jack, wouldn't let the jack come all the way down. That was the major problem for the delay on the pit stop. We are under caution here at Pocono International Raceway. Early laps here on the AC Spark Plug 150. Stay tuned, Greg Trammell leading the way. Introducing Michigan's newest car dealership. On M51 South of Dowajak. With grand opening savings for you. Hagen Wimberley Ford Mercury. And Hagen Wimberley Chevrolet Oldsmobile Geo are under new management. They flash prices on units on both lots. Save like never before on new and used cars, trucks, and vans. Bring the other guy's best deal. We'll beat it. Nobody. Absolutely nobody beats Hagen Wimberley on price. Nobody. Hurry for grand opening savings during July at Hagen Wimberley Ford Mercury. And Hagen Wimberley Chevy Old Geo. M51 South of Dowajak. North or South, there's no better deal. Expect a difference at Henderson and Crawl Lumber. At Henderson and Crawl Lumber, we stock all kinds of hardwoods. The difference is we can pre-finish and pre-cut to your specifications. We'll even pre-hang doors. At Henderson and Crawl Lumber, we have countertops, cabinets, bar tops, butcher block, and even fireplace mantles. The difference is we have our own mill, and we'll custom build these items from a simple sketch. All this plus a big difference, free delivery. Expect a difference at Henderson and Crawl Lumber, 200 Lincoln Way West, Osceola. Back at Pocono International Raceway, still working the first caution flag of the afternoon. We have 10 laps complete here in this 60-lap, 150-mile event. The caution brought out by the spinning car of Gary Weinbrewer. Weinbrewer, a 41-year-old driver from Ohio, spinning his car around and tagged the inside retaining barrier. He climbed out of the car. The car has some front-end damage, but he was otherwise okay. There have been some pit stops, Ned, and some fresh rubber, and our leader is now in the rear of the field. I think it's going to be interesting to see if Tracy Leslie and Jimmy Horton made a pit stop as well, he came out in front of Tracy Leslie to see if they will be able to come back up through the field, which we suspect they will. But those drivers, uh, very aggressive, have uh, good fast race cars. Bobby Bowsher, of course, and Bobby Gerhardt also on pit road as the field now crossing the tunnel turn there, which is turn two. Getting set to go back to green flag racing here at Pocono International Raceway. Now take a look at the jack here. See the see just sort of hanging the piece that Benny was showing a moment ago. They came around and trying to get the jack beneath the car, and it wouldn't work. They couldn't get the jack beneath the car, couldn't get it to function, couldn't get it to go down because they had the hydraulic cylinder frozen on the jack. Get okay, ready? we're ready to go green. Green flag and lap number 12 here at Pocono. Greg Trammell, impressive youngster. From Dawsonville, Georgia, 24 years of age, takes that mailing four down into turn one. And you can see way back in the pack, that white car with Jack Bowser pulling out and picked up several positions. He's one of those drivers that made a pit stop during that caution period. Back in the pack, these guys now trying to pick off slower traffic. The car number 60 is Tom Bigelow now being passed by some of the cars, that's Bob Keselowski and Tracy Leslie. The black car is Keselowski. The red car is Leslie. But look at Horton weaving his way through the pack. Yeah, he's on the left of your screen. You can barely see him there. Jimmy Horton has already passed about a half a dozen cars on this first lap. Here's Keselowski trying to make a pass. He's in the black car, but he couldn't do it. But look at Horton. Just passes him where he catches him. The Miles Concrete Pontiac for Jimmy Horton trying to win his fifth consecutive super speedway race as they are really heated up up front. That's charging Charlie Glotz back in the car number 28. On the inside, the black car is Chris Gerke, a veteran Glotz back, 52 years of age, trying to out-drag the youngster Gerke. Someone's got to give in turn one. Yeah, and Glotz back has the preferred line. He's on the inside. He'll get the position. Glotz back, the car now slipping up a little bit, but Gerke not able to take advantage. And Charlie Glotz back on the move. The blue car on your screen is Bob Breevac, our current point leader. He is, of course, running in the 
fifth position. Yeah, that's third, fourth, and fifth back there. Glossback is third, Gerke is fourth, and Breback is fifth. Jerry, listen to this. Jimmy Horton was 22nd after his pit stop on the first lap. He moved up to 11. And he's still on the move, Ned. That is Horton in the car number 80, moving by the car number 55 of John Alexander. Whatever they did that in the Horton pits, they have certainly made an effort, made this car very, very strong. Rick Miller is serving as the crew chief today for Jimmy Horton. They came in for that pit stop under the caution. And now Horton climbing into the top 10. Tracy Leslie way down on the inside of the front straightaway trying to move by some cars. And that's one good thing about this racetrack. It is so wide you actually can go when Leslie just about gets the car out of shape in turn one. And Keselowski has to jump in the brake to keep tagging him. He was, uh, Leslie was in 12th place before he made that pass, Jerry. So now he's going to be in the top 10 here very shortly. Tracy Leslie in that orange Oldsmobile, the Detroit Gaskets car. Bob Keselowski there behind him in the black car number 29. They are working on John Alexander in the car number 55. Tracy now showing in 10th spot. He moves by Alexander. And Keselowski will try to follow him through. And that's really tight up there. Alexander apparently did not see Keselowski and nearly had contact. Yeah, I don't think he saw him coming into that turn. He expected to get back down on the inside groove. And all of a sudden, there was Keselowski. Car number 76 is Graham Taylor. He's trying to make his move. The rookie of the year from 1989 in Archer competition. Veteran driver. Let's take a look up in the tunnel turn yet again to this pass. Okay, Leslie gets by, and Keselowski tries to follow him through. But the other car pulled right down, expected to get back on the inside, couldn't quite do it. Moving by Cecil Eunice, the car number 31 is Jimmy Horton. He now takes six spot away. Horton, who was packing shotgun on the field when they restarted the race just four laps ago, is now showing in the sixth position and is on the move. Hey, that's an impressive run, Jerry, coming up to the fact this is not the easiest track in the country to pass on, but that Pontiac has worked. Just look how quickly he closes up on him. Once he gets by one car, he sees another one out 100 yards ahead, and the first thing you know, he's right on his bump. He is moving in quickly on Bob Breback and Chris Durkee. Breback the blue car, number 34, the current point leader. Jimmy Horton on the moon. He realizes he has to be very careful. Horton has impressed so many people with his ARCA driving early in the year. And you heard him at the top of the show. He was ready to hang it up a year ago, sell his equipment, and quit racing. And those drivers trying to avoid those rumble strips at white line on the bottom of the racetrack. And now Horton's car very strong in the long pond straight away. Moving to the outside. We'll try to get around. Bob Breback. Fourth, fifth, and sixth place cars on your screen. The 19 car, the black machine on the left is Gerke, then Breback, and then Horton in six spot. Now these cars should be a little tougher to pass than some of those he has passed in the last few laps because these cars are certainly running faster. And as we can see, he, he has run behind Breback now for a full lap and has not been able to even make an attempt to pass him, but he will before long. Plus, you got to figure his tires are probably getting heated up a little bit from all that shunting around back in the pack, passing the slower cars. Probably so. Now, he'll pick up the draft here, Jerry, and let's see if it'll work for him enough. I don't think it will this time to be able to get around before they go into turn one. Take a look here, lap five. He was sixth. Of course, he pitted on lap 10 with a restart back 22nd in the field. And now, just six laps later, he is in the top 10 firmly in sixth position. Wow, trying to make a move here on the outside. Can he do that? Going to be tough on the tunnel turn. Very little banking up. Eight degrees only up out of turn two, and he will back off and think better of it. A lot of more veteran drivers have tried it on the outside of the tunnel turn and learned a lesson the hard way. Now, out of the tunnel turn, he tries it again high on Breback. His car is really getting off of the turns now very well. Back up front, Greg Trammell now trying to hold off the veteran Bob Shack. That's the man that's won over 70% of the races he's run here at Pocono. The car number 75 for Shack is 40 years of age. And the youngster, Greg Trammell, the Bill Elliott Melling Coors employee down in Dawsonville, Georgia. And Shack takes the lead down in turn one. Jerry, this was the first time that Greg Trammell has led here at the Pocono International Raceway and uh, has done himself well. He's been right up the front in the top three all day. He's an impressive young man. From the very first time he climbed in a car and, and drove Arca at Atlanta, he impressed Bill and Ernie Elliott quite a bit. He's closing back on Shaq a little bit. 
Well, how about this? Here's Tracy Leslie now has passed Jimmy Horton. So talk about on the move. He really is, too. Got to believe Horton did heat up his tires a little bit, but Leslie really showing a lot of muscle in his Oldsmobile early on. Tracy Leslie now being shown in the sixth spot. Horton is seventh, and those, both those cars now moving in on Bob Breback, our point leader. Leslie now will move to the inside of Breback. Coming up in turn three and take the fifth spot away, and Horton will try to follow him through. Here he is obviously faster than Horton because Horton was not able to move around Breback, still hasn't, and here's Leslie already moved around him, and now he's moving up on Kirk. Let's go to the pits and Benny Parsons. And I'm down here with Jimmy Horton pit with Bill Wilbur, the one of the Tide crew members acting as a crew chief for Jimmy. Yellow, yellow flag, yellow flag is out. Ready? Well, they have oh, a car. Oh, there must have been a spin down in turn one. But anyway, the green flag is still out, Bill. Your guys excited me. What is it? A blown tire on the on the 31 car, which is right beside them. But Bill, what did you do to the car on the pit stop? Well, we had some oil on the windshield. Jimmy couldn't see, so he came in. We just needed to clean the windshield. We thought we were going to change four tires, but he decided against it. And um, we're going to we get a caution here, which they've not thrown it yet. We're going to come in, change four tires, and make an adjustment on the car. It's pushing pretty bad right now. Age-old problem. The driver couldn't see. <laughs> and they're having a lot of trouble right now. They're behind this car, number 31, of Cecil Unison. We do have the yellow flag coming out right now. Cecil Unison, the car, number 31, apparently cutting a tire. We'll watch the left front of that car, Ned. Yeah, there you can see the tire pieces start flying from it. And it was the left front. Thank goodness it was the left front because uh, that allowed him to get the car down on the inside of the racetrack, keep control of it, but the yellow flag has come out as a result of the debris, all of those tire pieces that were thrown on the track. A lot of tire debris down that front straightaway, the fastest part of the racetrack. It'll be a break for Jimmy Horton and some other drivers to get on pit road. We'll tell you about those pit stops and have more ARCA racing action when we come back after this. You know, summer heat can wreak havoc on house paint, so choose weather beater. Come to Sears Summer National Paint Sale. We've reduced our weather beater flat finish paint to just $11.76. So see you at Sears. Sale ends July 28th. Hurry. You don't get to be number one by standing still. Ford trucks, the best ever ran. Only Ranger has Ford's exclusive touch drive to let you go in and out of four-wheel drive at the touch of a button. No wonder Ranger is leaving Chevy in the dust. Ford truck, ah, the best ever rest. The best built, best-selling American trucks are built for tough. What could this off-road vehicle possibly have in common with this off-road vehicle? The same quality filter protection you can give your car from Purelater, the world's largest filter company. Defending champion Michael Andretti and Danny Sullivan test their skills on a gripping road course. They headline the field at the Million Dollar Toronto Indy. Sunday at midnight Eastern on ESPN. You know, summer heat can wreak havoc on house paint, so choose Weather Beater. Come to Sears Summer National Paint Sale. We've reduced our Weather Beater flat finish paint to just $11.76. So see you at Sears. Sale ends July 28th. Hurry. Welcome back to the Pocono International Raceway. The reason for the caution flag, see the oil on off Cecil Unison's car, he blew the left front tire. We see the tire land there, it came apart. As the tire came apart, a piece of rubber went up and knocked an oil line off the tour. The car is out for the day, and there's oil all around the speedway that the officials will have to clean up. Caution flag here, and there's Cecil Unison climbing out of the car. The young man from Georgia, the former short track dirt driver from Jackson, in the Jacksonville area. Let's take a look again. They had a left front tire of that orange car. Everything was going fine, coming down the front straightaway, and all of a sudden the tire pieces start going out from under it. Apparently he ran over something and cut that tire, Jerry, that uh, started that. Now let's go back to the pits and Benny Parsons, who's with the driver. Cecil, what happened to your left front tire? Just coming down the front straightaway. 
I thought I felt it might be a tire going down when I went in the last turn, but when I come down the front straightaway, it just come apart. That scare you a little bit when it started coming apart? Oh, yeah. Because this makes it the fifth race that I've ever run on asphalt. But I didn't, you know, I, I never had one to blow out before. Well, now, you're old enough to have been running on asphalt before this. Yeah, but I've always been running dirt. I never had a, anybody, you know, that had the money to come run this. I finally got hooked up with Carol Levin and uh, Billy Hess and all them, the BSR, and they helped me get to where I'm at. What do you think? I mean, you don't have that much experience on the asphalt racetrack. Going down in turn one at Pocono, is that a wild feeling? It don't look like the car can make that turn, <laughs> but you just have to keep easing up and easing up. The car go through there. So you're going to continue to do some more of this after this race? I can't do this. You're going to continue to do asphalt racing, you hope, from here on out. Oh, yeah. Right on the going. We'll be at Talladega next week. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. Cecil Yunus from Blackshear, Georgia, one of the better dirt track competitors from the south and now on asphalt here in Arca competition. Under caution for the second time today. A lot of racing action to come your way. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this. Man, that guy's fast. Hey, Bobby, who's the new kid? Whoever it is, he sure knows how to keep a car looking good. Yeah, that car shines from the tailpipes to the front fenders. Who cleaned that car? Someone who taught me everything I know. Cleanest car I ever drove, but it needs a little work under the hood. Boy, I hope she's not racing tomorrow. Take a picture, boys. It'll last longer. If you want a clean car, you've got to trust your mothers. Life's full of simple pleasures, like the comfort of Levi's jeans. Or had you forgotten? Don't stop short of the peak, because second best won't do. There's a pride and peace before him. Take more than 650 horsepower, wide open, for 500 miles. You need maximum protection to cool it. I want the maximum going for me. That's why I've got peak on my car and in my car every time. Don't stop short of the peak. No, don't stop short of the peak. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth. Relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engine. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil. This track pack is brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. You see how the tire on Bobby Bowser's Pentaplex Ford is rubbing the fender? You see the gap in there? How would you fix this problem quickly in a race? Say you made contact with another car in the race and knocked the fender in on the tire. How would you fix it quickly? Watch as Gary Bowser, the crew chief, Bobby and the crew, takes a jack handle, a simple jack handle, roll the car back and forth. Roll the car back and forth to roll the fender out away from the tire giving them much more clearance for the tire. Well, there they do use those a lot on the short tracks and occasionally on the speedways like Pocono when you get a little fender rubbing. They sure do. And especially with the, the uh, variations of the banking in these turns, it, the, some turns you get the tires much closer to the sheet metal. And then, of course, if you get close to someone, that's when you get real trouble in these areas. A number of cars have pitted here during this caution flag. Many of the lead cars have been in the pits, as did the car number 80 of Jimmy Horton, who came back in. Now, we heard Benny Parsons talking to Bill Wilburn a minute ago. They were hoping to get a yellow flag, possibly, and get him back on pit road. Let's check in in the pits with Benny Parsons. Bill, you got your caution flag. What'd you do to the car? Well, we came in, we changed four tires. We made a stagger adjustment and uh, took a round of wedge out of the car. He said the car had been pushing real bad. Um, 
it started to come around just a little bit before that caution and um, you know we didn't make as big of adjustment as we thought we'd need to but we did make an adjustment and you think you're how I many are you all set for the day do you have to make any more pit stops we feel like right now that we can go the rest of the way um, it's going to be close but worth gambling for oh yeah well we're going to get the miles concrete pontiac back to the front okay bill okay thank you well i think it will be a gamble jerry going the rest of the way from here there are 37 laps to go that's a little less than 100 miles but this is one racetrack that you do not want to run out of gas on because it it is impossible if you run out going down this long front straightaway it's impossible to coast back to the pits i mean you're literally almost to wilkesbury over there in turn two <laughs> wilkesbury stand pennsylvania and uh it's happened before to some of the winston cup guys who have tried to stretch it in their races and of course uh, it might happen. Of course, if I had the kind of luck that Jimmy Horton's been having, along with all the effort and preparation this year, but he's been a, a good, had a lot of luck on his side, of course, I think I would gamble too, probably. Well, yeah, you can, and I'm sure they're keeping very close tabs off the fuel mileage down there as well. Bobby Bowser, who was running in the sixth position, made a pit stop while Vinny Parsons was talking to the uh, crew chief on the Jimmy Horton car, so he has dropped back in the field considerably now, so he'll have his work cut out for him coming back up through the field. Now Bobby Bowser is a second-generation driver, the son of Jack Bowser, who was, of course, a, a multi-time winner, I think 34, 35 wins in Archer competition over the years, and in fact, Jack Bowser came out of retirement last year and qualified a car for Tracy Leslie on one of the short tracks. Bobby Bowser had not driven any race car until late 1988, and here he is two years later and has already won twice this year at Archer competition, so an impressive young man. Hey, the green flag waited. Lap 25, 60 laps of surprise. The AC spark plug 150. Bob Shack was the leader, but that is no more down in turn one. As both Greg Trammell with the car number 18 and our pole sitter Tracy Leslie have moved to the inside and taken the first and second spots away. And Jerry, Bob Shack is the only one of those lead cars that has not made a pit stop during any of the cautions. That's Leslie in the car number 72, the bright orange and white room of Detroit Gaskins car. The Melling car behind him, that is a Ford. The 18 is Greg Trammell. And right behind them is the veteran Bob Shack. Shack, formerly from Lombard, Illinois, now lives in Lexington, South Carolina. He's a car builder. And married to a race driver. He sure is married to Patty Simcoe, a race driver. And Patty would be in this race, but she is expecting their first child. And of course, uh, just couldn't quite get the belt to go around. She told me a little bit ago before the race this morning they are expecting sometime in the fall and early October for their firstborn. And so, and of course, Bob Shack has not driven yet this year in Arca competition either. He's been so busy building race cars for the movie Days of Thunder in his race shops in Lexington. So now he's, that movie is completed and he is back to racing. Greg Trammell with new right side tires on that board. Uh, for a little moment there was working on Tracy Leslie, but dropped back a little bit as it came off of turn one, heading into the tunnel zone. Now Bob Shack moves up on him a little closer. Well, let's check in the pits with Bob Shack's better half, Patty Simcoe, on why he maybe hasn't pitted yet. Benny? Patty, why hasn't Bob pitted so far? Well, we're gonna, we're calling it on the weather. We're gonna wait and see if the weather holds out. Maybe by lap 30, if it starts raining, we might be there. Or we're just waiting for the right time to pit. Uh, Either by lap 40, we should be all right by then. And usually there's a caution that comes out by then. You can run 100 miles here? Yes. Well, with the, with the yellow laps that we've been running, we figure we will make it that far. When the child is born, are we going to go back to race car driving? After your child is born, are you going to go back to race car driving? I'm going to try. I don't, I'm just temporarily parked right now. But I hope to get back in. Okay, thanks, Patty. Simco, the wife of Bob Shack, of course, who currently being shown in the third spot. Front three cars, Leslie now moving away. There's a differential between first and second. Leslie on the left side of your screen. In the Oldsmobile, Greg Trammell, the forward to second spot, and the Buick is third. Back to Chris Gerke with fourth, and there's Jimmy Horton, who made the pit stop, and you heard Bill Wilburn tell Benny Parsons they had made an adjustment in the stagger, and he is again making a move to the front, Ned. Yes, he is. He's running in fifth place right now, and moving up on the fourth place car. Long 
long straightaway here at Pocono Raceway. Chris Kirkie in the black car now sneaking to the inside, trying to take a look, get a little bit of air in front of those cars, using that draft down the straightaway. Jerry, as we heard those cars come off of turn three and by our speed stump shot position there, they were probably running about 100. 25, 130 miles an hour at that point. But then they do increase their speeds to upwards of 175 by the time they get down to the end of that line. Then you better have a whole lot of brake pedal, as one guy said, if you're going to get that high speed hairpin down in turn one. And they gear down, and actually, they don't gear down, they just jump on the brakes to slow the car down to about 85 or 90 miles an hour. And if you don't slow down, there used to be a bowler plate wall there, but now it's a concrete wall. Just as hard. Just as hard, won't give. No one wins against concrete. Not at all. But there is a little more banking, as you mentioned earlier on the program, in turn one. And uh, that does help them to slow down and help them to move through the turn. Chris Kirkie in the car number 19. His best finish ever last month here at Pocono in Arca Racing. He finished fourth. That's where he's running right now, but he is right on the rear deck of the Buick of Bob Shack. 28 laps complete, just a couple laps away from halfway here at Pocono Raceway for the AC Spark Plug 150. Stay tuned, we'll be back. You don't have to worry when rain is pouring down Cause your home can take it Whatever comes around Olympic Oil Stain has pure linseed oil. Since oil and water don't mix, it helps stop water damage. It's no wonder we'll stop the rain. Olympic stops the rain. Protect your home with Olympic products now and save an additional $2 per gallon. Man, what a day. I could sure use a vacation. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'd like to be right here. Bud. Hey, maybe tomorrow we should bring the boss. Nah. <laughs> there is a better battery. The Napa Legend. Let us count the ways. Tracy Leslie lets an engine come unglued on the front straightaway, pulls way to the inside as he gets the halfway point as the leader, but it will be to no avail. His Oldsmobile erupts in a plume of smoke here on lap number 30, and he pulls to the inside. A very smart move by Leslie to keep the oil and debris from that engine out of the main racing group. He knew he had a draft of some eight or nine cars behind him, and we have caution here for the third time today. I think there was concern that there might be some oil have dropped before Gary. He was able to get it down on the inside. He was leading and literally pulling away and coming out of turn three. Yeah, he really was, and everything looked great, and then all of a sudden, you can see the smoke coming from it. Now, normally, you see engines, when they decelerate going into the turn, that's when you see the engines flow. But his was as he was accelerating off of turn three. Well, he has pulled the car off the track, and he still, looks to still be rolling along there, coming up in the short shoot, trying to get uh, a car away from the racing surface. The yellow flag is out. We were under caution on lap 31. And the Detroit Gaskets Oldsmobile. What a tough year for Tracy Leslie. Let's check in in their pits. Benny? Larry LeMay, you've been talking to Tracy on the radio. What did he say? That didn't give no indication, nothing. Just come off the corner to let loose. I don't know what happened. Something in the motor. But you, if it's not an oil line, you are out for the day. Yeah, we're done. Sorry, bud. And here's Bob Shack in the pits, a break that they were wanting. You heard Benny ask Patty Simcoe. She said, we, we think we can get a, a yellow flag in the next 10 laps. And indeed, they have. And they will make their scheduled pit stop right side tire change then. Yes, and uh, now they're coming around to the left side. They also made a very slight chassis adjustment on that car number 75. Someone took a half a round of wedge out of it. Took a little bit of pressure off the left rear. And here's Jimmy Horton coming out of the pits after making a pit stop, which should be his last one. And he will have to wait there until the arc official now with his left hand motions him back on the racetrack. Don LaDuke, the car number 79. Donnie LaDuke up there in the pits. And now Bob Shack's car having changed all four tires and been fueled. They push the car down pit road. He gets the car fired and head back to turn one. A lot
lot of smoke out of Danny Bumbaco's car. The New Jersey driver, the budget auto body Chevrolet, showing a lot of smoke there. Yeah, something has gone awry. It looks like in the engine department of that car, Jerry. I don't believe we'd see that much smoke. It could be uh, if a tire would go flat. And of course, we saw earlier that tire cut an oil line on another car after the flat. But looks like he has some very serious problems here. Young man making only his fifth start in our competition. Here's our leader, Greg Trammell, now coming down pit road. Also, Chris Jerky will watch Trammell as the Melling crew will go to work. That's the Bill Elliott crew take, working in there. Let's check in with Benny Parsons. They are changing the tires on the Melling automobile. They've changed in the right side, but yet, the, okay, now the fuel is going in the car. I was thinking it was not going to put any fuel in, but Mike Grant has went across the wall with the fuel, with the fuel can. 19 also in the pits making the fuel stop. Greg Trammell, left side's going on. Car is down and away goes Greg. Great pit stop by the Millie crew. Four tire change there. That is Chris Gerke there, the car number 19. Now both Gerke and Trammell, two names you will hear a lot of, I believe, in the future in both ARCA and possibly Winston Cup competition. They are being stopped at the end of pit road. It basically says go looking toward us, but the other side of that stop sign says stop, and they must stop and let the field pass and then they will be released by the ARCA official. So both Gerke and Trammell, two 24-year-old drivers, they will certainly, and then why do they really hold them there? Is, is it for safety reasons? Because for safety reasons, they're waiting for the entire field to go by. They have to go at the end of the line when they go into the pits on a caution period. When they come out, then they have to go back to the end of the line, and they're waiting for cars to go by. There's still several cars. I think the last one is going by now, so they should let them go. And indeed they do. Well, yeah, but uh, Greg Trammell beat him out of the pit, so why would he get to go first? But he is going first. Well, maybe inexperience a little bit. And, they, of course, I would imagine in scoring, they will try to see who got uh, the end of pit road first, and uh, maybe not. Maybe that was a, a move uh, on Gerke's part to say, I don't have to pass you on the racetrack. I can pass you here in the pit. The main screen. <laughs> Under caution for the third time today. Let's take a look as they come down pit road. Left side of your screen, that is Trammell. And actually, I guess Gerke does beat him in the stop sign. Post. Okay, yeah, he does. I, I, I knew that, that he had got to rolling first, but he was farther up the pit. So, yeah, he's in the right position. So Sorry pit, about that, Chris. Pit position, certainly very critical there, as we will see it all day tomorrow in our coverage of that AC Spark Plug 500. Caution for the third time today here at Pocono International Raceway. A good crowd on hand here in the Pocono Mountains. Stay tuned for more ARC racing after this. If you introducing Michigan's newest car dealership on M51 South of Dowajak with grand opening savings for you. Hagen Wimberly Ford Mercury and Hagen Wimberly Chevrolet Oldsmobile Geo are under new management. They flash prices on units on both lots. Save like never before on new and used cars, trucks, and vans. Bring the other guy's best deal. We'll beat it. Nobody. Absolutely nobody beats Hagen Wimberly on price. Nobody. Hurry for grand opening savings during July at Hagen Wimberly Ford Mercury and Hagen Wimberly Chevy Old Geo. M51 South of Dowajak. North or South, there's no better deal. It's Bratson's Furniture's going out of business sales final days, and everything must go. Hurry in now to Bratson's Furniture before your savings of a lifetime disappear. Sofas, love seats, chairs, tables, lamps, and accessories. Everything is going fast, so don't wait. Selection is best right now at Bratson's, but it can't last. It won't last with Bratson's unheard of savings. The final days are here. Bratson's Furniture's going out of business sale on now. Bratson's Furniture, 812 East McKinley Avenue, Mishawaka. Sunday, watch the fun, Sunday night. The Red Sox face the Royals on Sunday Night Baseball, live at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Back at Pocono International Raceway, third caution flag of the day as a result of a blown engine, and a lot of people have had their troubles early on out of the race diesel units. You saw his car, the, the left front tire came apart, being cut for an oil line. Alan Pruitt, in his first start ever, he is out. Gary Weinbrower, who spun and brought the first caution flag of the day in turn one. 
Tracy Leslie, our leader, who just erupted an engine on his Oldsmobile. Danny Bumbaco, the car in 57, who showed a lot of smoke and pulled his car off in turn two. And Bob Keselowski, he is currently second in the point standings in our defending series point. And, of course, uh, he is 25 points back of Bob Reback. He is the latest retiree. A tough break, of course, for Bob Keselowski. And ESPN Speed Week tonight at 7.30 p.m. A lot of racing action updates from here in Pocono and what's going to happen tomorrow on our coverage. And, of course, Monday night, Motor Week Illustrated at 7.30 p.m. Two half-hour shows. It'll keep you informed of all the racing action, both before and after the races here. Our live coverage on Sunday tomorrow, of course. Well, they'll go back to green when they come back around here. We noticed uh, Alan Pruitt, uh, his name being one of those drivers that's out of the race. He's from Hickory, North Carolina. That's where I'm from. You grew up in that area as well. And, you know, I, had, I tried to put my thinking cap on. I said, now, Alan, has he been running at the Hickory Speedway or the Tri-County Speedway or Concord, some of those in that area? But uh, could not uh, think of him having driven a race car. And then we learned that this is the first race ever for him. Well, I, I went and asked him. I said, I'm from that area, and so is Ned. And I said, well, Alan, uh, did you just move there or something? He said, no, I grew up there. He said, I said, what have you raced? He said, no, I haven't. I said, you haven't? He said, no, I just from stoplight to stoplight. I said, well, you, you, oh, you mean, uh, he said, well, I've never been on the racetrack anywhere until uh, about 20 minutes from now. And so he said they bought this car from the Wood Brothers. And uh, Wayne Bumgarner, who was a crew member full-time for uh, the Bernstein crew, the Quaker State team, helped them put the body on the car, and they came here to race. So an ARCA certainly gives everybody an opportunity to get some experience. Under caution here at Pocono Raceway. We thank you fans for your ESPN signs and all the support over the years watching our speedboard coverage. Stay tuned. Over its life, a motorcraft battery delivers enough energy to light up a small park, like Candlestick Park. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. A motorcraft spark plug has to fire 500 times a minute. Over its life, that's a spark five miles long. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. full of simple pleasures like the comfort of Levi's jeans or had you forgotten remember how much fun it was to color it still is with Dutch boy satin finish paint for the look that gets the looks year after year you can see why it's worth more Back at Pocono Raceway, 34 of the 60 laps completed in the AC Spark Plug 150. Charging Charlie Glotz back by virtue of an earlier pit stop. He will now assume the lead in his Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Good run for Joe Nemiroski. It's car number 87. John Alexander is back in third spot, taking a look through the top 10. Bobby Bowsher back up in the 10th spot. Horton, who made the pit stop, is showing in ninth as other cars have pitted. And... Chris Gerke also on pit road. He has made a pit stop. He is in 15th spot. Some of the other leaders back in the pack. We'll watch those guys make a move up through the pack as we get ready for green flag racing here once again. Jerry, we only had 28 cars to start this race, and we, there's about a half a dozen that we saw earlier that are out of the race, but there are still 20 cars on the lead lap. Great competition here in ARC for the ARCA cars as they are having their 10th stop of the year. They've had three events that have been postponed because of rain earlier in the year. Winchester, Indiana, up in Flat Rock, Michigan, and then a couple weeks ago, up in London, Ontario, at Delaware Speedway Park. So they would have been their 13th stop in a 21-race tour. Those three races having been rescheduled, so they are here at Pocono, not even halfway through their year, and already have a great point battle going. Now, we mentioned a minute ago that Bob Keselowski, who is currently second in the points, has dropped out of this race. Bob Breback, the point leader, is in the right of your screen in the car number 34. He is currently being shown in fourth spot. So this could be a big break for him if he can go on and finish. Here's Charlie coming off of turn three. They'll get the green flag this time. Charging Charlie Glossback, 52 years of age, from Sellersburg, Indiana, in the car number 28. Car owned by Ken Allen. Allen Glass Company sponsoring Glotz back a former Junior Johnson car. He leads it down in a turn one. A 
of the long pond straightaway. Out of turn one, headed for the tunnel turn. Second spot being shown in the car number 87 of Nemorowski. And now Breeback trying to move inside of John Alexander to take third spot away. Breeback, the car number 34. The blue and yellow numeral. Buick moving inside of Alexander. John Alexander, that's a car that is prepared by Bob Shack. And you said at the top of the show, Jerry, that that car would probably run good, and certainly it is up in the top five right now. They've moved back to fourth, of course, at the moment. John Alexander, the driver. The car is owned by his wife, Susie, and prepared, of course, by Shaq. Doing a respectable job now, keeping that car in the top five. Average speed here after 37 laps, 107.143 miles per hour. The race record, a quick 124. We have had three caution flags, of course, that have brought that average speed down. Yeah, they're averaging at over 150 miles an hour per lap when they're running under green flag conditions. Up the short chute now, headed for the tunnel turn. Now, what's the speed, Ned, roughly in the tunnel turn area? That turn is so treacherous out there where they're headed across now up the Long Pond Strait, where they are now in that turn. Is it, what, 120 or 130? Somewhere in that neighborhood, yes. If you got a good handling race car, you can go through there at that speed. Of course, turn three, a little bit flatter, so they'll slow down a little bit more, although it's a long, sweeping turn. Still, uh, that's perhaps the slowest point on the track. Well, Ned, you said at the top of the show it was going to be a shootout between Horton and the 80 and Shaq and the 75, and you were indeed correct, as here they come. Horton, on the right side of your screen, and the orange car is Bob Shaq after making that pit stop in four-tire change, trying to move back in the top five. Of course, Horton driving the Pontiac number 80, Shaq and the Buick number 75. There he moves around the Alexander car, and there's the Pontiac of... Jimmy Horton, the, on the right side of the screen, he's the, the back car of those three blue cars. Monte Carlo, the car number 87, the Demoroski, the Buick of Reback, that's the third place car, and Horton is in fourth place in the Pontiac. 01, the Gupta machine, car number 01, that is Sonny Gupta, the 30-year-old driver. And Jerry, the caution is out. So they will, of course, race back to the start-finish line. It'll be interesting to see if anyone comes in the pits this time. They should have plenty of fuel now to go the rest of the way. Unless they need an adjustment or something, they should not uh, need the pit. But look at this race back to the line. And they are racing back to the caution flag, and getting by is Jimmy Horton as he is getting by. He got by Breback as the caution flag came out. Our Benny Parsons is standing by with the pole sitter and early leader of this race who is now out, Tracy Leslie. Tracy, big plume of smoke down the front straightaway. Engine problem? Yeah, we we had the Detroit Gasket Olds was running the, probably the best it's ever run this year. And I've been trying so hard to give Ron Parker and Daryl Strange, Becky Phillips from Detroit Gasket a win, and I really thought we had one tied up. We sat on the pole here, and we just, I really think we had the best car out there today by any means, and just number one cylinder let loose and ended our day. Jimmy Horton has won four ARCA races in a row. It got him in a ride in the 17 car to replace Darrell Waltrip, who's injured. Did that give you some heart that, hey, maybe ARCA is a step stone into Winston Cup racing? Well, I think it is, just like, you know, the Bush Grand National is, and um, there's a lot of big names come out of there. One guy's holding a microphone in front of me, uh, plus a few other guys, you know, and I think it's good. You know, it gives us a chance to run on some of the speedways, and... You know, uh, I guess I've said it all along, you know, one show isn't going to get nobody over in the other garage, and, and you just got to keep digging, and that's all we're going to keep trying to do. Talladega next week, looking forward to it. Yeah, I hope I hope I got something there again. Um, we thought we had everything together today, and, you know, after the last Pocono here, we, we kind of got messed up on the pit stops, and we thought we had that race pretty well in control, but we're going to go back to Talladega. We switched around everything, and, and we got a whole different outlook. And, and, and we're going to run good. Jerry, he's going to be back next weekend trying again. And indeed he will at Talladega. They will be at Michigan later on in August. We will have him on ESPN up in Michigan. Here's the 01 of Sonny Gup to the Raleigh, North Carolina driver who had spun. And, of course, uh, to bring out the caution flag. Let's take a look, Ned. Well, he got down. It looks like too low. Well, there's some smoke coming from the car. That might just be dirt kicking up there. He might have got on those ripple strips and caused him to lose control originally, Jerry. And he spins it all the way around. Doesn't look like there was too much damage to the car. Well, a little, uh, little agricultural racing there on the bottom of the racetrack in turn one. He brought up a little dirt and uh, 
had a ride and some little some some ripples that or some rumples we should say down in turn one for Sonny Gupta but that for whatever reason he has gotten the car back underway and as it says on the front of the car sponsors welcome certainly for the 01 car lots of ARCA racing action to come your way in the last laps here at Pocono stay tuned hey come on this is any way to spend the summer no. Make it a Bud Summer with Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry. Check inside 12 packs and you could win one of a hundred Bud Label pools. Look for me, Jeff Altman, where you buy your favorite beer. But we're giving away pools all summer long. It's wet. It's wild. It's Bud Summer. Hey, man, you need sunscreen. You're starting to peel. Ooh. What could a sleek Jaguar have in common with a fat cat that a dashing deer has in common with a nimble ram and a big bad bulldog has in common with a cute little rabbit the same quality filter protection you can give whatever animal it is you drive from purelator the world's largest filter company Back at Pocono International Raceway here at Pocono, Pennsylvania. The AC Spark Plug 150, the Automobile Racing Club of America's cars, 10th stop on a 21 race, $1.5 million tour. We hope you're enjoying today's Speed World coverage here from Pocono, Pennsylvania. Today's coverage brought to you by Quaker State. The Big Q is one tough motor oil. By Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. And by Olympic, the family of stain products that protect your home from damage rain can do. Olympic stops the rain. Great crowd on hand today here watching the action at Pocono Raceway. And here's a leaderboard charging charge Charlie Glotz back showing the way. Hold it off Joe Nemiroski. Jimmy Horton now trying to make it five in a row. He's moved back in the third spot in front of our point leader, Bob Breback and Bob Shack. Six through ten with 20 laps to go. John Alexander, Gerhardt, Trammell, Gerke, and Jerry Hill. A good run back in tenth spot. 11 through 15. Tom Bigelow, the IndyCar veteran. Bobby Bowsher, Graham Taylor, three-time champion Bob Dodder, and Doug French in 15th. Mark Harding, Glenn Brewer, Sonny Gupta, who spawned just a minute ago, Kenny Compton, and Donnie LaDuke. Round out the top 20. Just 20 laps to go. And then a month ago here, when they had a caution flag late in the race, a couple of people, Jimmy Horton, one of them, came in and made a pit stop and changed tires. And that was a difference that enabled, enabled him to get by some of the other guys like Keselowski and Tracy Leslie to take the win. Well, I think certainly new tires will allow them to run faster. It's a little bit surprising, Jerry, that Charlie Glotzbach has not come into the pits in the last. He pitted, according to our records here, on lap 23, which left 37 laps till the end. That's a little less than 100 miles. And they have run quite a few laps under under caution so that certainly would conserve a lot of fuel and I guess that's the way they got it figured out that they can go the rest of the way but uh, certainly newer tires would help the car but he had to jump out to a pretty good lead before this last caution came out so maybe he has it where he wants it well maybe he does this is the Chevrolet Monte Carlo it's owned by Ken Allen of course they had this car at Michigan a couple of weeks ago and they're gonna attempt to qualify in the Winston Cup race up there but of course it rained out qualifying they did not get a chance to qualify the car there to run Winston Cup. They have it here for ARCA. They will have this car back at Michigan again on ESPN for our ARCA coverage up there. They are finishing the cleanup there, and the tractor drivers are pulling off, trying to get all the sweeping done. We'll be back with the final laps here at Pocono after this word from our sponsors. One Tough Motor Oil announces one tough guarantee. Ask your participating service center about Quaker State's tough lubrication guarantee. 250,000 miles or 10 years. Register your new car absolutely free at a participating service center. Use only Quaker State. Have oil and filter changed as directed at a service center. And if any lubricated engine part suffers an oil-related breakdown, you're covered. Quaker State guarantees it in writing. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Over its life, a Motorcraft battery delivers enough energy to light up a small park, like Candlestick Park. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. A Motorcraft spark plug has to fire 500 times a minute. Over its life, that's a spark five miles long. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. 
No matter what sport America likes, there's one place America looks. Kmart, the one place with the best brands in sports. Don't let insects keep you from enjoying the outdoors. Stock up on bonus size repel insect repellent. Only at Kmart at great everyday low prices. Come to the one place that has it all in one place. Kmart, where to go when you go out for sports. Back at Pocono, Pennsylvania, here for the AC Spark Plug 150, the ARCA race. Of course, we might mention to you that those of you who are expecting to see the Barber's Sob race following our coverage today from Watkins Glen, at, because of the length of our event, that race will not be shown and will be shown at a later date on ESPN. We apologize to you fans who were tuning in for the Barber's Sob race, but we hope you will enjoy the final laps here of the AC Spark Plug 150 as we are back to green flag racing and charging Charlie Glotz back on lap number 44. He can see in his mirror, they're fanning out now for three wide and putting on the chase as they head for turn one. Boy, the car number 87, they're trying to make a move on Charlie. There is, they went into turn one, but Charlie held his ground. And look at Jimmy Horton coming up on the outside. Jordan Horton literally inhales Nemorowski coming off of turn one and tries to pull him at Nemorowski now getting his top speed and heading for turn two. Now remember, the inside groove is the hot line there, but now Horton moves around him coming off turn two and will set his sights on Glotzbach. Nemorowski just backed off going into turn, which is perhaps a smart thing to do. Car number 75, Bob Shack. Remember, five wins and seven starts this racetrack. He literally owns the record books in ARCA competition here at Pocono. And now, the car number 80 to the left of your screen, really closing in a hurry on Glotzbach. Yeah, pressure tires on this one, Glotzbach, and that should make a difference. Not much Charlie Glotzbach can do except sit in his mirror and watch as Jimmy Horton begins to reel him in. Now two car lengths. Car length and a half, that in turn one. And Greg, Trammell. Greg Trammell, right, Ned, moving inside of Bob Rebat. The car number 18, Trammell, the youngster from Dawsonville. Take a look at Glotzbach's progress throughout the afternoon here. He started in the fourth spot, a lap 10, of course, up in, back in 20th spot on lap 20. All the way back up to first now on lap 45, and he is trying to roll the dice and hold on. Unbelievable move for Glotzbach. 20th to 6th and a little over 10 laps, but finally calling Sergeant Charlie. Some and of that came as a result of some pit stops, of course, uh, Jerry, but he has had a good run here this afternoon, and you can bet your bottom dollar he's going to use up all of that racetrack he possibly can to keep Jimmy Horton back there, and that will work to Bob Shack's advantage because he... That'll give him an opportunity to move up a little closer. Bob Shack is the orange or sort of reddish colored car you see in the top of your screen, the third car there. Of course, slots back the leader. Then Horton and Bob Shack. Remember, we talked about being a shootout there between Horton and Shack, and of course, slots back is right in the thick of it. He is the leader, and Horton will try to make the move outside of turn one. Boy, is uh, Charlie really protecting that inside groove, and Jimmy just can't make it off of uh, turn one on the outside, and he's very smart, too, to back off and get back in line. So he'll need to wait for Charlie to make a little bit of a slip, see if he can go by on the inside, but he can't do it, but he drifts up and makes Charlie think that he's gonna try to go by on the outside, but Charlie has had that trick tried to pull on him before. Jimmy Horton about a car length away, and Shaq is closing now. He has closed it within two car lengths as Bob Shaq sitting back there watching the battle between Horton and Glotzbach. Interesting to see if Shaq now will be patient. If he will ride in that draft and let Horton take his shot at Glotzbach, or maybe he'll see possibly if he can make a move on Horton and then try to get Glotzbach himself. Passing for four spot back in turn one. Greg Trammell now moving around. Joe Nemorowski taking the fourth spot away, and Trammell is on the move in the Ford Thunderbird. Yes, he is. That car working very well. He has made several pit stops, has changed some tires. They might have even made a couple of adjustments on it, but the car is working well for him. Laps winding down. There's 14 laps to go here at Pocono. Jimmy Horton having won four consecutive super speedway races setting an all-time ARCA record. He is in the car number 80, trying to move by on the outside of charging Charlie Glotzbach. Uh, I don't believe that'll work, Jerry. Not quite gonna do it. Glotzbach, a lot of experience. That's where really the experience pays off. 
That experience certainly pays off, no question about it. And he is protecting that inside line, Jerry, as good as we have seen anybody do it. Now, let's look at the back of Gotchback's car. It looks like that there might have been there for a moment. It looked like they might be getting a little black back there, like if he's losing a little rear end grease or something. You see, you pick it up at another point. There you can see that it, uh, yeah, there is some, some black material on there, which is an indication that there might be a little bit of rear end grease or something. Doesn't look too serious. Don't think there's anything that's going to affect his running in this race. That white trunk panel in the back of that Monte Carlo is showing a little bit of grease back there, and now it looks like Steve Horton can make a move on the inside up in the tunnel turn. Well, Glock's back again, covers the inside groove. Horton tries to hug it, and Shaq now gets into the action a little bit. See if he will make a move. Shaq feigns to the inside. Horton makes a move to the inside and see if Shaq now will close it up behind Glockback. They're getting awfully close going in there. Now Horton might have the advantage. Jimmy Horton puts a nose beneath Glockback. Glockback's car slips and slides and Horton takes the lead. Shaq now will try to the inside. Charlie, Charlie Glockback. They are dead even here at the start finish line headed for turn one. And as long as they run dead even that way, Jerry, that's going to help Jimmy Horton to pull away a little bit because they're busting a big section of air back there. And of course, Shaq was not able to make the pass. Glockback hangs on to second. Bob Shaq now trying to get himself a shot at Jimmy Horton, but he has to get by Charlie Glotz back. And Bob Breback back in the pass was being packed, was being passed by Chris Gerke. Breback to car number 34, and Gerke going by him. That is for the sixth spot. He made that look relatively easy. Well, he, he's on the move right now, Jerry. Chris Gerke having gone by Joe Nemirovsky to take over fifth. Young man who was had an impressive run here last month. His best super speedway finish ever. He finished fourth. Trying to move up now and take fourth spot away. And Bob Shack is coming into the pits. Well, this is certainly an unscheduled pit stop for him. Let's see what he does as he comes in at a pretty quick pace. Comes to a stop. And they go to the right side. So apparently he had a tire going down. Certainly didn't show up on the racetrack. It must have happened all of a sudden, but a very tough break here for Bob Shack in that new Buick. Good pit work is going to get him back out there pretty quickly. He'll stay in the lead lap, but Jerry, he'll certainly have to have a caution to get back in the thick of the battle for uh, the front spot here. Well, it takes about 58 seconds to complete a lap at Pocono. Of course, it only took him about 30 there in the pit, so he will be able to get back out and not lose a lap, but he will need the yellow flag. 10 laps to go this time by. 50 complete, 10 to go here in this AC Spark Plug 150. There's a leader, Jimmy Horton, continuing to set records in ARCA competition, looking for win number five. Five consecutive Super Speedway wins, five starts. He's batting a thousand. And a year ago, just about this time, the youngster from Hamilton, New Jersey, was about ready to call it quits and hang it up. What a difference a year makes. And there's Charlie, charging Charlie Glotz back some five car lengths back. Well, Jerry, remember this shot we showed at the top of the show where Bob Shack was batting a little over 700 with five for seven here at Pocono. Jimmy Horton, four for four on the season in 1990. Now leading this race, could keep his record intact if he can stay out front for the rest of the way. Meanwhile, Bob Shack will not add to his situation. His percentage points will go down. Well, let's check in and find out about that pit stop. Benny Parsons is standing down there. Jerry, I'm with Jeff Chandler, one of the acting crew chiefs on the Bob Shack car. Why did he pit, Jeff? Well, he must have run over some uh, water or oil over there in a the tunnel turn because the car slid up the racetrack, and he thought he had a right side tire going flat, so we brought him on in as a precautionary measure. And as it turned out, the tire wasn't flat, so I guess we made a mistake. And well, you're running out of time, aren't you? Yeah, the only way that we could win this race now is to get a caution flag. Tough break for the Bob Shack crew. Benny, when he came out of the pits, he was running 18th. He since has moved up to 16th, but we have so many cars in the lead lap in this race that boy, when you make a pit stop like that, you come out way behind. Laps winding down. It'll be nine laps to go, and Jimmy Horton trying to hang on and win five in a row here on the speedways in ARCA competition. Stay tuned for the final laps after this. Attention all Catholic. Hi, I'm Jim Basney. On Monday evening, July 16th, a major hailstorm inflicted extensive damage to over 120 new and used vehicles at Basney Honda. We are unable to repair these vehicles on a timely basis, so we must liquidate our entire inventory.
All new Hondas will be sold substantially below dealer costs on a first-come, first-served basis. New Hondas below factory invoice, used cars below dealer cost. It's just a little dimple. Whether you're remodeling, replacing, or building new, we present an open and shut case for Anderson Windows. Anderson Windows and Patio Doors, opening and closing daily in America's finest homes, as well as her finest dealers. Jackson and the Royals beat up Boston in Fenway. Now the Red Sox try to return the favor and keep near the top of the AL East. Sunday night at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. Final laps here at Pocono, Pennsylvania, and Jimmy Horton, the 34-year-old driver, former dirt track modified champion from New Jersey, nearby Hamilton, New Jersey, just a little over an hour and a half away, leads it here in the last few laps. Battle now, heating up for third spot. Greg Trammell in third place in the Ford number 18, the Belling car, but Gerke has moved right in on it. Chris Gerke in the car number 19, so that's a good battle for the third position. Two impressive young drivers, both 24 years old, both starting in ARCA ranks and have run awfully well. Trammell having finished third last month, Gerke finished fourth. In fact, they finished exactly the way they're running right now, in third and fourth spot. And maybe Gerke says, uh, in a month, I've learned something. Maybe I can pass him now. Well, he's got his work cut out for him. Jerry, let's update the fans, uh, the Bob Shack fans, where he's running now. He's moved up a couple more positions while we were way on break. He now is running 14th, so he's moving back up through the field. But as his crew chief says, they're going to have to have a caution flag before they can pick up too many positions and get back towards the front. Red Ford with the Melling colors on the front. That's the car number 18 of Greg Trammell, the car, of course, owned by Harry Melling. Trammell, we mentioned, is an employee of the Elliott Stable. He's in the dynamometer technician there, works in the engine room along with Ernie. And Ernie and the Elliott crew are behind the pit wall, having supported him all afternoon. And here is Shaq back in the pack, trying to move back in the top 10. He was 14th a minute ago in his brand new Buick Regal, a tough break here for the Lombard, Illinois driver. And there's the one they're chasing right now, Jimmy Horton. 34 years of age, driving the same car that they have won four times with on Super Speedway. The car is owned by his father-in-law, George Smith Sr. Rick Miller is the crew chief today. His laps winding down. It'll be five laps to go this time by. Now Bob Shackman has moved all the way up to 10th place, so he is really picking off those cars. Uh, and the yellow flag is out, and we understand it is for rain. It has been picking up a little bit, so... This will bunch the field up, but we're so close to the end of the race here. I don't know how heavy that rain is and how quickly it might uh, get away, so we might even have to end under caution here. Yellow flag being waved for the fifth time today. A bit of a sprinkle of a shower here with five laps to go as the field now passing down, taking the yellow flag. Jimmy Horton being shown as the leader. Charlie Glotz back in second spot. There is Horton. Glotz back running in second position. Trammell is third. There's the Glotzbach car, the white and red Newville Chevrolet Monte Carlo, number 28. Trammell is the third place car. In the 18, we saw him a moment ago along with Chris Gerke. They were battling for third spot. The Miles Concrete Pontiac for Jimmy Horton. Starting out with a win at Daytona, escaping a multi-car crash down there in the ARCA ranks. Ran well at Atlanta. Halliday got an impressive run he had there on ESPN, and he won here last month at Pocono by virtue of a great late pit stop and fresh rubber. And, of course, he has impressed a lot of people. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Jerry Punch, you can see I'm not quite too dumb. Guess who I found? A guy with an umbrella. <laughs> Buddy Parrott. He's also the acting crew chief on the Charlie Glossback automobile. I guess with the rain coming down, it'd be a kind of a silly question to ask if you're going to pit. No, we're not. Uh, actually, Benny, we, you know, we were on good years today in the Hoosier. I don't know what kind of deal they got over there, but, uh, you know, he, he told me before the restart said, uh, you know, he looked like the, he might get out tired here. So, uh, but Charlie did a good job in the car, and uh, we're real happy with it. And that's Ken Allen's uh, uh, situation up here. And uh, that's a Junior Johnson race car, by the way. Uh, it's one that they had an R&D last year, and, uh, or two years ago, maybe. They dug it out of mothballs. So this is what Charlie's been running. 
And he's not doing a bad job. Do it. The Hoosier tires, you say, you think he may got out tired a little bit? Yeah, I think so. I, they might have had a little better tire. I don't know. Uh, you know, we were hoping maybe they'd tear up like normal, you know, but uh, but they didn't. So, uh, anyway, uh, Horton must get, he didn't have a win here. And uh, we were playing for rain a while ago. We were jumping up and down, you know, saying, doing a rain dance. But uh, that didn't happen. But like I said, uh, you know, I was real happy for uh, Charlie. He's going on down and run the uh, Arca race in uh, Talladega next week. So, I tell you, I run a lot of, I, I mounted a lot of tires for him back in the back in the 70s, and uh, you know when I was working for Goodyear. So he and I are personal friends, and uh, this is just something to help him uh, help him along the way. Buddy, you're like myself. You've around this around this racing business a long time. Jimmy Horton this year has won five. Arc, if he wins this thing, which it looks like he may, has won five ARCA races in a row. That is phenomenal feat. Well, it really is, but you, you know you got to get you uh, get the credit to the Horton crew and uh, you know his car and uh, the engine program. They haven't had any loss of motors and things. So uh, you know, plus he's doing a good job and uh, he's driving Darrell Waltrip's car. So everybody must think he's got a lot of ability, and I think he has. And Charlie said he did a good job in the car also. Okay, we're going to stay dry down here, Jerry, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you, Benny. You stay under that umbrella. Buddy Parrott, one of the better crew chiefs in the business for many, many years. Of course, he is the active crew chief for Derek Cope, this year's Daytona 500 winner, and the winner up at Dover, Delaware, back in May. And they are helping out the efforts of charging Charlie Glotz back. Under caution here, the laps wind down. Here we are having a rain shower at Pocono Raceway. And Jimmy Horton leads Scott's back Trammell, Gerke, and Breebeck in the top five. What makes a Quaker State engine so tough? One tough motor oil. And being tough takes more than just talking tough. There's a brand that says it's been engineered for smaller engines, while well, Quaker State has been tested tough for small engines in Japan, in Europe, and in America. In fact, Quaker State has toughed out the most demanding specs for every size engine in every size car sold in the U.S. What makes any size Quaker State engine so tough? Quality engineered Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. You know, summer heat can wreak havoc on house paint, so choose Weather Beater. Come to Sears Summer National Paint Sale. We've reduced our Weather Beater flat finish paint to just $11.76. So see you at Sears. Sale ends July 28th. Hurry. Back at Pocono Raceway, under caution for the fifth time today. This time, it's a rain shower in the area. We have but three laps to go, and you see some of the rain now pelting the umbrellas up and down pit road. And Jimmy Horton just uh, sitting back there doing a little dance on the floorboard of that Pontiac saying, just come on and keep raining. He doesn't want to see this race restarted because Bob Schacht, who made that pit stop, has now moved his way into the top ten. And this crowd here, good crowd on hand at Pocono Raceway. And I tell you, they've done one well of a job up here. we got to give a call to Dr. Joseph Mattioli and Joey, his son, and Bob Plebin and all the people here at Pocono Raceway. They have worked so hard on this facility to make it one of the show places they have here in the Northeast for all the fans and the competitors. They really have, Jerry. Every time you come here, you see improvements made at this racetrack. And uh, the fans keep coming out in bigger numbers all the time. And I think that has a great deal to do with it. Jimmy Horton, the young man who won a lot of short track races in less than an hour from here in New Jersey. In 11 years, he won 14 track championships in the Northeast Dirt Modified Circuits. And uh, now the, the water on the racetrack coming up from those wide Goodyear and Hoosier racing tires. Horton leading Charlie Glotz back down with a couple of laps to go. The GMC truck leading him down. It is as raining, and we'll take a look at the top 20 as they will finish here. This is how they should finish here with just three laps to go, and it looks like we may not get any chance for any more green flag laps. Jimmy Horton, the leader, Charlie Glotz back is second. Greg Trammell is third. Chris Gerke fourth. And Bob Breback, our point leader, would be in the fifth spot. Joe Nemorowski, good run in six. John Alexander, outstanding effort in seventh. Bobby Gerhardt, eighth. Jerry Hill, ninth. And Bob Shack is tenth. In eleventh place, Graham Taylor, Bobby Bowser in twelfth, Tom Piccolo in thirteenth position, Bob Dodder, veteran in fourteenth, and Doug French in fifteenth. 
still uh, more cars in the lead lap in 16th is mark hardy fellow who's running his second ever race here at pocono he ran in the race here in june kenny compton running in 17th place donnie leduc 18th sunny gupta who spun earlier now running 19th and lee raymond in 20th position so they are circulating these last few laps here with the gmc safety vehicles on the track this expansive two and a half mile facility and uh, these showers predicted to move out of the way here this afternoon. Of course, we will have plenty of racing action from this facility tomorrow live on ESPN. The AC Spark Plug 500 and this driver right here, Jimmy Horton, will be driving in substitute for Daryl Waltrip. And uh, Benny, uh, you staying dry down there, big guy? What? <laughs> I'm getting wet down here, Jerry. Can we get this thing over with? How many more laps is it? Two more laps? White flag next. Thanks, Jim, very much. Hey, guys, it's wet down here. Get us a break. Get this thing over with, will you? Trying, Benny. Trying, babe. Trying. Man. Jerry, do something. Will you? You got the officials next to you. Talk to them, will you? <laughs> I think they sort of. Like, I think they sort of like to see that uh, Benny down there. And there, and then it's. Some people are enjoying it, Benny, and a couple of them there. That's right. <laughs> it is a nice weather for a duck here. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I figured. You had a duck on the camera or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're enjoying this. You know, hey, guys, I was going on a diet. My wife and I talked about it. I was going on a diet. But, you know, who would you have to pick on if I lost any weight? I mean, to ruin an entire telecast if I slimmed down any. So forget it. I'm going for milkshake right after this thing is over. I, I tell you, if you saw this guy diet last night at the buffet table about two miles from here, I mean, he threw out the ceremonial first plate when they opened the door about 545. <laughs> but I couldn't find the bear. I couldn't find the bear. You know. I've been eating at this restaurant around Wilkesbury, the Bear Creek Inn, oh for God. years. And we've been telling about the bear that came down and went in the dumpster. Well, last night, uh, uh, Thursday night, I went in and said, Bob, where's the bear? He said, well, he comes down at 7 o'clock. It was about 6.30. At 7.30, no bear. I said, Bob, I think you guys have been fabricating this all along. I left about 8.15. As I walked out to my car, I, I looked toward the dumpster. I yelled, hey, bear. And guess what, folks? A black bear jumped out of the dumpster. About a 300-pounder. I went the other way. Thank you very much. What he didn't tell you, folks, is that he jumped in right after because he thought there was some more dessert in that dumpster. So <laughs> Benny was trying to sneak up on that bear. And if you'd have seen that, folks, that had to be something for, for a world's funniest home videos. Uh, trying to see Benny sneak up, uh, crunching through that garbage and toward that bear. Benny, you would have made a terrible commando. Ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? Waving, we, we're seeing the white flag anyway. Waving that white flag, and I know Benny Parsons is happy just like Jimmy Horton is to see that white flag as it is raining heavier here at Pocono, Pennsylvania. One more circuit here at two and a half miles, and Jimmy Horton will take that Pontiac and continue to write the record books here at ARCA, winning an unprecedented five consecutive super speedway wins in a row. Charging Charlie Glotzbach will finish second. A good run for him in the Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And uh, Jimmy Horton saying a little prayer for this Pontiac. Say, just keep running now. We've only got a couple of more miles to go, and we'll be back to the start-finish line. Jerry, I'm going to predict that this young man will get an offer in a top car in Weston Cup Racing for 1991. Now, we've already established the fact that he will substitute for Darrell Waltrip during his recuperation period. But with this five wins in a row on super speedways and ARCA competition and getting that opportunity in Darrell Waltrip's car, there's going to be a lot of changes made in Winston Cup racing between now and the end of the season. And I predict that this young man will get one of the rides. That's a personal prediction, though, of course. Certainly already the silly season in Winston Cup, of course, and there's already a lot of rumors in the garage area about people leaving rides and changing teams. And maybe we can discuss a little bit of that tomorrow. It's going to be very interesting here let's take a look at the arca points here bob brevac uh, certainly he has pulled away from keselowski bob keselowski was only about 25 points back at the start of the day keselowski having exited here and brevac now 105 points in front of keselowski bob bowser bobby bowser the second generation driver in third chris gerke in fourth and bob daughter will hang on to the fifth spot in the point standings as they take the checkered flag here momentarily at pocono raceway well, you can see the amount of rain that has come down here in the last eight or ten minutes, as you can see it coming from the tires of Jimmy Horton's Pontiac. Ned, you mentioned how Horton 
had impressed people in the Winston Cup garage. He was picked to get in the Walter car, not because he was in Daytona at the time of the accident, because he was the best driver for, for that ride. Jeff Hammond and the crew were very impressed. When they rebuilt the backup car and had him go out and practice some late Friday afternoon while, they were, while Walter had gone to the hospital to be worked on, they couldn't believe the effort that Horton had. He got in the car and moved by Ernie Irvin and, and Mark Martin and some of the other people who were involved and had gotten in their backup cars. Horton passed them all and just, just pulled away from them. So they were very impressed with his efforts. Of course, he never really got the opportunity to see what he could do in the 5400 because he was at the back of the pack as a result of starting a backup car and then, of course, was involved in that uh, big accident on the second lap. Well, a nice and toasty, warm and dry. Benny Parsons has made his way up to victory lane, and Benny, they're coming down for that big flag. Jerry, you're talking about warm and toasty. That's you. But look, now just in a minute, five in a row, folks. Five, there it is, the checkered flag. Jimmy Horton has won five ARCA Super Speedway races in a row, and Jimmy, turn that thing around and get in here quick, and let's get this thing over with. Now, Benny, I understand that they are indeed going to make a U-turn down at the end of pit wall, and will come back rather than go with the two and a half miles around the racetrack. They're going to save you, buddy. Exactly. I've been telling all these folks, let's get this deal over with. They're going to save us about two and a half miles. So, someone listen to me. Be back with you with a winner in just a second. Uh, and there is Jimmy Horton making the U-turn down there, put his arm out the window and made that turn left and uh, and lots back in the field will follow him. Greg Trammell, good effort there. Chris Gerke as they will finish. And now Jimmy Horton, and you heard the fans standing and cheering. They may have been a little dampened, but their spirits were not dampened whatsoever because they know this young man and they, a lot of these people have watched him grow up and mature as a driver on the short tracks around eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And now he is one in front of the hometown folks. Jimmy Horton picking up win number five. He pulls that car up pit road, unloosening that chin strap and will be able to relax momentarily. And the Miles Concrete Pontiac will head to victory lane. Well, he's certainly the favorite here. No question about that. And he knows where victory lane is. No one had to show him. There he pulls her right in there, and Benny Parsons there waiting for him as he gets that Pontiac in the right position. Of course, uh, they'll want to get him out of the car there in just a moment. Pulls the car in, puts it in, puts it back in gear. Get those gloves untapped, get a nice cold drink of Gatorade, and a big smile from Jimmy Horton, a thumbs up, and a well-deserved effort, young man. Of course, uh, and maybe uh, he could, this could be an omen for tomorrow. They're gonna, if they get Daryl out of the car, now Walter ran some pretty good laps in the car. If they can not lose a lap, and we'll be able to see that as they start the race tomorrow. It's going to be tough because they've got to be very careful getting Walter out of the car. But this man will get in it. And uh, I think Jeff Hammond and the Tide crew have got to be pumped after seeing his effort today. Oh, I would think so. No question about it. Now, one thing about it, Jerry, uh, since he ran these last four or five laps under caution, he's had plenty of time to rehearse his victory speech. You saw him put that uh, Hoosier neck piece on there to uh, indicate the type tires that he was running here today. The SNH Racing Pontiac for Jimmy Horton getting the big cold drink of Gatorade. He climbs out now to the attention. He will stand up and wave the folks, and our Benny Parsons is there. Hey, Jimmy. I mean, I realize you've been high and dry, but we're wet in you. Congratulations. Thank you, Benny. He's been. You know, just one of them years, it's just, uh, you know, we weren't that good in the beginning of the race, and just things come around. Five in a row did you ever, five, I mean, that's got to be a record of some kind. <laughs> I guess it is, you know, we just, just happy for thanks, you know, that we're getting so much luck, you know, we just can't believe it's happening, and you know, we just got to keep rolling with it. Most of the time when you go to an ARCA pit, up and down pit road, you see four or five guys. I walked down to your pit today, there must have been 15 people in your pit. When it sure helps get some help, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it gets bigger and bigger now. <laughs> you know, thankful Tide and uh, Ultra Slim Fast and, and the Henrik Motorsports for helping us out. And, you know, Jeff was on the radio with me and talking me through it. And, you know, the car wasn't right in the beginning, and he, we made some changes, and we're practicing for tomorrow. Who is this guy? That one? Jimmy. What? Jimmy. Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Another race car driver, folks. 
And Jimmy Horton celebrating in victory lane. That's our Sears Roadhunter Winner Circle interview with Benny Parsons. Top five finishers here at Pocono Raceway. Horton there was celebrating in victory lane. Charlie Glossback finishing in second place. Greg Trammell is third. Chris Gerke is fourth. And Bob Reback is fifth. Tomorrow, a lot of racing action to come your way. At high noon here live from Pocono Raceway, the AC Spark Plug 500. NASCAR racing action. Can Bill Elliott repeat? We'll watch the action here with Bob Dickens and all of us at noon tomorrow. Tomorrow night at midnight, Toronto IndyCar racing up there. The demanding 11 turn, 1.78 mile course, 103 laps from Toronto, Canada. Jimmy Horton pulling into victory lane, a fifth consecutive win on super speedways in Arca competition. A happy Jimmy Horton, and he will race tomorrow with some cup. For Benny Parsons and Ned Jarrett, I'm Jerry Point saying tune in tomorrow. So long, everybody, from Pocono, 